Hey everybody and welcome to the next episode of Adam and Simon Bullshit Busters. I'm Simon Batchelor. I'm Adam Bastock. And this week we are going to be busting the myth around why more content might not be better, especially if you are thinking about using that as an SEO tactic. So Adam, do you want to start us off by explaining why people might be thinking that simply adding more content to their website is a good SEO tactic? Yeah, so this is a common kind of frustration point of mine, so I'll try not to go on to a rant too much. But essentially, the idea that more content, the more content you produce, the more likely it is that someone's going to find it in Google, and therefore someone's going to um, find your site because of it. And that's not necessarily incorrect, but it depends on why you're writing that piece of content. And the idea is, is that, well, if you're producing 10 blogs a month, that might not be better. You know, 10 generic blogs a month is 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 basically worse than four really good blogs a month. Um, but that kind of gets lost in translation quite a lot around content production and that content equals good for SEO. And therefore people think, well, if it's good for SEO, I'll do more of it. And then you end up in a position where you've just got loads of blogs that no one actually cares about just filling up your site. That's basically the main reason. Yeah, and I think also one of the other things I hear a lot is that it's like, well, because people search for keywords or key phrases, as they're sometimes referred to, if we make lots of content with that keyword and key phrase in and we use mm. it everywhere, then surely that's a good thing. Surely that's going to help in the search engines. But quite often, obviously, that isn't the case because you just end up with lots and lots and lots and lots of pages that all look the same to the search engine. So it doesn't know where to send it. Whereas if you just have one page that's very focused on that keyword and key phrase, then Google knows, oh, okay, well, actually, this is the page about that on this website. Yeah. So is there anything you can do? Let's say you want to write a blog about that same topic. Do you just link back to that page? How would you recommend you sort of go about, let's say you've got your keywords and phrases across your main pages on your website. So you've got your main services spelled mm. out. You've sort of explained all the benefits that you provide. Now what? Now how do I go about making content? Yeah, okay, so this is a good one. I'm going to probably go a little bit theoretical with this, so so strapping, guys. <laughs> um, I think the, the first thing to remember is that if everything is important, nothing is important. So that's that you should apply that to your blog post. And, that you know, if you're just putting your keywords everywhere, then it doesn't really matter because you're just diluting everything. The second is around kind of keyword cannibalization, which is the technical term for, for what we're discussing here, which is around basically you've got so many pages with keywords trying to rank that they are cannibalizing each other because it means that nothing's ranking. The way to, to kind of solve this is to take, take a step back and ignore keywords and, and focus around search intent. Keywords are essentially a way to uncover the search intent of what someone is trying to achieve. And by search intent, what I mean is if I type in, how do I paint a room? There's a very clear defined action or problem that I have there that I'm describing to Google that I'm trying to expect an answer for. And therefore, if your website provides the most relevant, most accurate, uh, most authoritative answer to that question, I am likely to rank. If you have how to paint a room, kind of not, not, not linked on every page of your website, but if you have that keyword spread throughout your entire website on different blog posts and say you've got five different blog posts just called how to paint a room none of those are going to rank because google cannot identify from those five which is the best page for it so therefore when, when you're thinking about content and you're thinking about producing a series of pieces of content around room painting don't just go for a generic approach go for a very specific approach that answers the intent that someone has in search very specifically so that might be um how to paint your bathroom, perhaps. I was going to say, yeah, but even more specific than that. So there's, there's how to paint your bathroom, but then, you know, how, how quickly after painting your bathroom can you have a shower? That's a second topic that you can put on there. Yeah, how do you paint a kitchen? Is kitchen paint um, splash-proof or, or, or kind of wipe wash-proof clean. or whatever it might be? Wipe clean, that's the word. What are the best colours for a living room? What are the best colours for a, a, a bedroom? What, you know, what could you paint... Why should you paint your hallway green or whatever it is? Yeah. These are all very specific search intents and problems that people have. And therefore, writing about those is going to be far more valuable 
in a very specific way rather than you producing 10 blog posts about different tips while painting. So I think this is the case of less is only more in the less is more, but only when you're thinking about very specific topics and being, mm. I'd rather someone wrote four extremely kind of niche, uh, highly specific, empathetic articles than writing 10 blog posts just about the latest kind of, what's the word, like colour fashion or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, I think I think there's definitely sort of ways you can write about a topic without, without writing about the topic. And I think mm. you, you've said, you know, do I need wipe clean paint for my kitchen? That's exactly. a really specific question that someone's going to type into Google, but inadvertently they're asking about painting the kitchen, right? So if you've already got a guide on how to paint your kitchen, then writing a blog on whether you need wipe clean paint in your kitchen can simply link to that other page. You don't need to repeat yourself on that blog. And I think that's where a lot of people fall down. They're like, well, no one's going to click the link. Once they're here, I need to explain everything. And it's like, no, people will. If they're interested, they'll click through a few pages to find out, especially if you've made a really useful guide on how to paint a kitchen or how to paint a bathroom. You yeah. know, if someone's got that as their weekend plan and you've got a page that's going to save them from mucking it up and having to do it again, of course they're going to spend a couple of minutes reading it, even if they've landed on your blog about bathroom colour trends for 2021. It might yeah. be like you know, and if you're thinking of going to the super, uh, to the to the hardware store and buying this paint the weekend, read our how to tape tiles guide before you go. So I'll be like, exactly. oh, tape! I hadn't even thought of that. You know, this is about the problems that you're helping solve for the customer. So I think, as always, our content advice comes back to helping solve customer problems because it's the best and most effective way to a engage the customer, which is the most important and primary role of content but b it really does help in search engines because they are trying to help deliver answers to people who have questions because that's what we all do now we just go to the internet and type in our questions and i think it's these more specific um blogs and articles and posts and guides that will start to rank over time because google will just start to pick them up it's just that fundamental aspect that, yeah, people get hooked up quite a lot on keywords, but it's like keywords, they're just a, that's, that's a, that's a, they're the building br kind of blocks of mm. what someone is trying to achieve. The keyword itself isn't what's ranking, it's the, the, the solution to the problem that someone's trying to describe that's ranking. And therefore, if you build your entire content strategy around answering customers' problems, then ignoring any SEO research you do will probably, I reckon, work out pretty pretty fine so yeah yeah excellent well yeah i think that is definitely the summary is to focus on the problems you're solving rather than the keywords use the keywords as a jumping off point of course but yeah always focus on how you help to solve the customer problem so Absolutely. uh if you would like to ask us a question or you've got a burning um uh, internet marketing question that you'd like to ask us then you can connect with us in our linkedin group just search linkedin for adam and simon bullshit busters you can find the group join it and we post the episodes in there and you can connect with us and ask your questions in there so thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time bye just drop the job